Welcome back everybody to another episode of Retro Revival, where we try and bring classic games back to life. In today's episode, I'll show you how to get one of my all-time favorite multiplayer experiences from the classic Splinter Cell Chaos Theory working in 2018 on a modern computer with widescreen support, fixed lighting effects, higher frame rates, extra maps, and the ability to play online with your friends. Step 1. Install Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Now, if you don't already own Chaos Theory, you can buy the game through Steam for $10, though it frequently goes on sale for around $3, so you're probably better off waiting for a sale. Step 2. Set up a profile. Once your game is installed, go to the game directory and locate the Versus folder. Open this, and then open the Systems folder to find the SCCT Versus.exe. Open this file to launch directly into the game's Versus mode. From here, you'll be asked to create a profile. Go ahead and do this, and try and confirm that the two graphics settings are set to the highest value. Don't bother changing the default resolution, because we'll be changing that later in a .ini file. If you try booting into a match, you may notice that the game's resolution, frame rate, and lighting effects are all completely messed up. So, let's begin fixing this mess by addressing the lighting. Step 3, install 3D Analyze. Using the link provided in the description, download 3D Analyze, and place the files into a custom-made 3D Analyze folder in your game directory. Open the file 3D Analyze with Save Batch. Using the Select button at the top of the window, search for your Versus.exe. Then, simply check the box that says Gun Metal Demo Fix. Once this is done, click the button at the bottom that says Save Batch, and save this file to a location that's easy to access. This file will be the file used to launch the game from now on. If you try and launch the game through this batch, the game will boot up alongside 3D Analyze, and the lighting in the game will be fixed. If you attempt to boot the game from the SCCT Versus.exe, you'll once again have broken lighting effects. Step 4. Set a custom resolution. Now that the lighting is fixed, let's focus on improving that terrible default resolution. Go to your systems folder under Versus and find a configuration file simply called Default. Open this file and search for Full Screen Viewport. Set the Full Screen Viewport X and Y values to your own custom resolution. Once you've done this, save and close the configuration file. Now because you've created a profile, we're going to want to make sure that the profile runs our custom resolution. So, open your C drive, locate the folder called Program Data. This is usually a hidden folder, so make sure your Windows is set to show hidden files and folders. Now scroll down and find Ubisoft. In there should be a Chaos Theory folder that was created when you made your profile. Open that, and then open Save Games and Verses. Open the profile file with the PRF at the end. Within this configuration file, locate the option Screen Res, and set that value to negative 1 to use your custom resolution. You can go ahead and boot up the game from either your batch file or your original SCCT Versus.exe to test to make sure that your resolution is working correctly. Just keep in mind that the HUD elements and game elements can be stretched on widescreen resolutions. Step 5. Unlock the frame rate. Using the link provided in the description, download the Framer file. This program is incredibly simple and designed specifically to fix the frame rate in Chaos Series Versus mode. Simply launch this program before booting up the game and set the frame rate to whatever you want. Just be warned that the game is designed specifically to run at 32 frames per second. Raising it past this can cause various glitches and network lag between players, especially if you're hosting a session. Step 6. Set up a virtual LAN. Now we've arrived at the biggest problem with Chaos Theory's multiplayer mode. As of 2016, the Ubisoft servers are no longer available to use, which is no surprise considering the handful of players that still played the game. But this doesn't mean the game is unplayable. Thankfully, there's a built-in LAN setting in the game's menus that we're going to be taking advantage of. If you're just trying to play with friends under the same roof, then you should be all set and you can enjoy your LAN party. But if you're like 99% of the world, you're probably trying to play online, either with random players or with your friends. So, you have a few choices here. One of the most recommended options is a program called Tungle that creates a virtual network adapter on your computer and allows you to connect to other players over a private network. I personally don't recommend this as the program itself is poorly designed, has a ton of ads, and you can't create a private network with your friends unless you fork over money. I personally recommend trying Hamachi, a free program that's easy to install and will allow you to create virtual private networks for free for up to 5 users. Just set up a network name, a password, coordinate with your friends, and once you're all logged in, you can boot up the game through your batch file and connect via the LAN option. If you run into any network-related problems with your computer, I recommend uninstalling Hamachi, but it shouldn't interfere with anything if installed correctly. Step 7. Download a map pack. 
Now, this step is optional, and if you're brand new to the game and only plan on playing with friends, then you likely won't need to bother. But if you really enjoy the game and want more maps to play with your friends, then you and your friends should download a map pack. The currently most recommended pack is called the Community Map Pack, which contains a ton of fan-made levels, some finished and some not so much. I personally recommend sticking to Mr. Mix Map Pack, as it contains only the best levels, most of which are actually re-releases of levels from the original Pandora Tomorrow, made officially by Ubisoft, and it also has a nice installer to make the installation and uninstallation easier. Use the link in the description to download the map pack of your choice and follow the steps to install the necessary files into the appropriate places in your versus folder. Once it's all installed, boot up your game and check your map list to see if it worked correctly. And that's it, now the game should be playable at a higher frame rate, a higher resolution, fixed flashlight and dynamic lighting effects, and you should be able to play online with your friends with several new maps. So let's run through the steps again to summarize. Step 1, install Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Step 2, boot up Versus and create a profile. Step 3, download 3D Analyze. Step 4, set a custom resolution. Step 5, unlock the frame rate. Step 6, set up a virtual LAN. And step 7, which is optional, download a map pack. And that should get everything working and allow you to replay this classic multiplayer experience with your friends with tolerable visuals and performance. I hope this video was helpful, and if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.